Hey everybody, this is Jorik. Welcome back to my channel, Portugal and Beyond. I hope you're having a great day. As always, if you're new to the channel, please subscribe for more information about Portugal, Europe travel, and Europe travel tips uh, as I have them and produce them. If you are a veteran, thank you so much for checking out my channel and coming back. So I'm going to talk about Ernest Hemingway today and his time in Paris and more so the places that he went in Paris because we visited uh, the city recently and it was so cool for me to be able to go to some of the actual places that he went and be able to spend time, whether it be having a drink, having some food or doing some reading in some of the very locations that he called home while he was in Paris. So let's get to it. Ernest Hemingway, as you know, is one of the icons in literature of 20th century literature for sure, especially uh, to those that are from the United States. My guess is many of you from around the world might have in primary school had to read one of his books uh, or through university days uh, as part of English course or creative writing or something of that nature. From 1921 to 1928, he spent time in Paris and he was part of what was called the Lost Generation. Gertrude Stein, F. Scott Fitzgerald, um, Simone de Bouvier, uh, Jean-Paul Sartre, uh, amongst others, uh, James Joyce. Many of them called Paris home or spent time there and they were able to hang out at these places and transfer ideas as well as have copious amounts of alcohol and food along the way. But they almost pushed each other to become better uh, writers or painters or composers. So as we went to Paris, it was on my list. I wanted to hit a few places that Hemingway had gone and I want to share some of them with you because if you go, I want to make sure that uh, if you're interested in Ernest Hemingway, you can go to these places. So I have seven places, as I've listed in the thumbnail, I've got seven places that you can go to. I'll list them here. Also in the description, I'm going to put the link to the website so that you can find out where they're at, check things out, maybe add them to your itinerary for your trip to Paris. So here it goes. So first place is uh, Les Du Mago. I'm going to get that screwed up and I apologize. My, my French is terrible. But that is a place where he would hang out with Sartre, uh, de Beauvoir, others, F. Scott Fitzgerald, Gertrude Stein, and they would talk shop and they would drink or they would have coffee and talk about just literature or their ideas and pass ideas back and forth with one another. This place is in, along uh, the St. Germain Street. Excellent place. It's hard to get into. You usually have to wait in a queue to get in, but it's a really cool place to people watch and also get the feel of where a lot of literary giants hung out. Right across the street from it is also the next place, number two, Café de Fleur. That is a place where Hemingway did a great amount of writing and drinking. That too also has become a place for people watching or celebrity watching. Often for some reason, celebs will go to that particular place and grab a spot outside or inside. It also usually has a long queue, so it, it may take you half hour, 45 minutes to go in, but I would suggest grabbing a coffee there. The coffee is really good and any one of their pastries for sure. Now across St. Germain from those two locations is number three, which is Brasserie Lip. Hemingway, when he had a few bucks uh, to spend, would go over there and either saddle up to the bar or grab a table. And as described in, by many articles, he would have lots of beer and sausages there, but he had a thing for potato salad and he loved their particular potato salad. I will say, uh, from experience, I wanted to go and just have potato salad, and they didn't allow that. You you need to have potato salad with a meal. So you do need to order a meal when you're going to Brasserie Lip. You can't just have the potato salad, but it's very good. It's a little pricey, but it's excellent French food, I will say. The next stop, number four, is in the Ritz-Carlton. It's now called Bar Hemingway. I don't believe when he was there, it was called Bar Hemingway, um, but this particular little tiny bar is, is a place that he frequented, especially with F. Scott Fitzgerald. So as they were talking, can you imagine the ideas that they would have shared 
while they're having uh, cocktails and drinks in this place. It's pretty amazing, uh, as well as the Ritz-Carlton Hotel itself is really cool to walk around and tour. So if you get a chance, I would highly recommend hanging out at that place. Number six is Harry's New York Bar, or at the time when Hemingway was there, I believe it would have just been called the New York Bar. And it is very famous for a couple of things. It invented the sidecar, which is a drink that's very much out of style, but in the 20s and 30s was a, was a big drink. But it is claimed to also have invented the Bloody Mary. So if you want to go try a Bloody Mary from where it allegedly originated from, you're going to see lots of memorabilia. And I'll say lots of U.S. memorabilia as well as U.K. memorabilia. Uh, college and university flags and pennants all around the ceilings. They have a significant scotch collection. Uh, so if you're looking for any particular rare single malts that you want to have, uh, they have some options there that you can try. And they also have, uh, at night, in the bottom area by the bathrooms, they also have a piano bar area that you can get into during the evening. You usually have to get a reservation, and sometimes there's a queue to get in for sure. But Harry's New York Bar is a place that I would certainly recommend to have a Bloody Mary and kind of imagine what it was like when Ernest Hemingway was there. Number seven, Shakespeare and Company. This is a place, although not the original location that Hemingway went to, but he would go to this place to, to lend books. They would lend out books almost like a library would way back in the day. This place is famous for having all of the Lost Generation writers kind of hanging out there. But James Joyce's iconic Ulysses was published by Shakespeare and Company. When you go... It's a really amazing store. It almost looks like an antique shop mixed in with a bookstore. It's something that you may take, you're going, it doesn't look like much, it'll take me 10 minutes to walk through. You may take 30 to 45 minutes to just take in the books, not just the stuff that's for sale downstairs, but more of the limited and first editions that are upstairs. Some of the old typewriters, just the motif is very cool, as well as taking in the pictures of a lot of the famous writers who would have been in Paris in the 20s and 30s, which it's amazing. This place, uh, in fact, when I went, I picked up a copy of Ernest Hemingway's Movable Feast, much of which was written in and about his time in Paris. But I got it at Shakespeare and Company. I thought it would be uh, cool to be able to buy a book uh, from Hemingway in Paris at a place that he frequented. So that is a place. And then last but not least, uh, Le Closerie de Lille Café. I'm, I screwed that up, but you can see a picture of it and I put the, the proper name in. That is a place where he had several meetings with F. Scott Fitzgerald and it is uh, alleged too that the manuscript for The Great Gatsby from Fitzgerald Hemingway read, got the first draft and read through at this restaurant, at this cafe. So that that is pretty amazing to me to think of, you know, the places that you can go in Paris, especially number seven, but all of these locations, the amount of history that's dripping from the tables or I'll say the beer glasses that you get to experience up close if you're a fan of, of literary um, culture, especially the, the 20s and the lost generation and, and the amount of great writing and pieces that came out of that era, if you were a fan of Ernest Hemingway, I suggest that you stop by these places. And when you're in Paris, walk in Hemingway steps. As always, thank you so much for checking out my channel. Have yourself a great day and enjoy your travels. Hey, thanks so much for watching the full video. If you get a chance, and if you're interested in reading some crazy workplace stories, please check out my two books, Magnet of Badness, Volume 1 and Volume 2, both available on Amazon in ebook or soft cover. If you want to make fun of me, there's plenty of stories where you can do that. If you want to make yourself feel better about the job that you're in, It'll make you feel better too. But uh, crazy stuff that happened over 30 years, you won't believe it until you read it. So thank you so much for watching. And if you get a chance, pick up a copy of one of these on Amazon. Thank you so much.